today's part two of my anorexia story and it's going to cover like hospital admissions which for me was between the age of about 15 and a half and 19. I was in three different hospitals. So I was first admitted in January 2004 when I was 15 and a half and the problem was at the time there were no specialist eating disorder services where I lived and in the next county over there was psychiatric services but they wouldn't take me because I was too critically lower weight. So I got admitted to a general ward at a hospital close to our home but the problem was the ward was for children with like severe physical disabilities and they just weren't really equipped to deal with me and like I needed watching every second of the day and well they watched me during meal times but like even that they didn't really watch me well enough and I just hid all of my food. The nurse would come in to sit with me and I'd just put friends on and she'd sit and watch friends and I just hid all my food all around me and then as soon as she left I'd just flush it down the toilet. <laughs> and they gave me loads of like high calorie supplement drinks but I got them to freeze them because I didn't like drinking them and then that also made them a lot easier to hide so I'd just like wrap them up in tissues and hide them around me. And one day I actually forgot that I'd hidden this frozen drink in my bed and so it melted everywhere and it was like fluorescent pink, like full on bright pink. And I was just like, shit, they're gonna work out what I'm doing. And one of the cleaners came along and I was like, can you clean my bedding for me please? And they did, they like cleaned all my bed sheets before the staff had even realized it had happened and I totally got away with it. So like, that's what I mean by, I literally needed to be watched every second of the day. So at first I was actually losing weight whilst I was there because I wasn't really eating anything. And it's quite scary to look back on now and see like, how ill I was and just there wasn't specialist care there like I was having like blood tests every single day obs every single day one night they took my pulse and it had dropped below 40 and they had to call my dad to let him know like what a scary phone call to receive and then they ended up doing my obs every 15 minutes during the night which drove me crazy but like at the time I didn't really appreciate just how ill I was and I was just gonna keep going. Like I was still gonna hide my food. I was gonna do anything I could to not eat. And it's just scary to think that my mind was so taken over and possessed really. Like it is literally the only way I can describe what happened to me at that age is I was possessed. It was something greater than me and it was a complete compulsion. And I just, I don't think I ever would have stopped. And I absolutely hated this place. Like I was on total bed rest, which is the most mind-numbingly boring thing you can ever experience. <laughs> in the end, the psychiatric services came and did like an assessment on me to see if they could take me. Cause I just, I don't know what the alternative would have been. I did get transferred to, <laughs> to the next county to an adolescent psychiatric unit. And to be honest, like this place wasn't specialized in eating disorders either. And I think the mix of patients was about half eating disorder, half other conditions. But the other included like quite severe schizophrenia, bipolar, psychotic, a lot of very suicidal patients. And that's really scary to be exposed to at 15. Like my first day at this unit, I was put on total bed rest there as well. So I sat on the bed and in the room next door from me, the boy had managed to get hold of a razor or something and like quite severely self-harmed. And the staff were coming out with like towels saturated in blood. And I was literally sat on my bed like, what the actual fuck, like I should not be in this place. Because it's very different, like I know I was harming myself but my I wasn't intentionally trying to kill myself, you know? And also like on the first day they went through all my possessions and took everything sharp off me because in case the other patients got hold of it. And to be fair, there was some serious self-harming on the ward and like people would go to any extents as well. So yeah, it was quite a mix of people. And like my dad described it as put them in a pot and stir. Like you just get a lot of people with a lot of conditions together, put them in one place and just, I don't know. I just, yeah, it was, it was a difficult place to be. So yeah, oh, <laughs> don't say your bum. <laughs> so when I got there, I was put on total observation like 24 hours a day, which I needed. But I was literally watched like getting dressed, having a shower, actually I wasn't even allowed to shower because it burnt too many calories, having a bath, when I slept, but I literally needed this. Like one night I was caught, I'd taken the cord off my dressing gown and I was tying it round my stomach really tight and sleeping with it like that to try and make me skinny. I was also allowed no activity at all, like total bed rest. I got wheelchaired to the toilet, which did my absolute tits in because I could see the toilet from my bed. I was like, I can walk. <laughs> 
and the staff were really touchy as well like when I was on my bed if I like moved my leg they'd be like stop trying to exercise you had all control stripped away from you and like I ate my meals in my bedroom I wasn't allowed into the dining hall yet to be with the other patients but to be fair I needed it I needed every mouthful that went down my throat to be watched because I totally lost control myself. I didn't think there was anything wrong with me and I didn't want help at all. I like fought against this help every single step of the way. And to be fair, even though this place wasn't specialized, like they did get me out of that very, very critical BMI zone and they got me up to a slightly less critical, I guess, BMI and I was allowed off my bed and then I was allowed to like start joining in with unit life and like eat in the dining hall with the other patients. They took us on trips. There was a school on the unit which we could go to, but it wasn't like teaching lessons school. It was more like we just did like arts and crafts and stuff. Like I'd been totally banned from my GCSEs at this point. I wasn't allowed to study or sit my exams, which was just as devastating as being made to eat. <laughs> so I was in this place for months. I think it was about nine months in total. And like I turned 16 there. I got my GCSE results there, but I hadn't been allowed to sit my exams. So they tried to give me predicted based on what they had, but I'd been taken out of school for so long that my results were awful. I know there was a lot of Fs and Ds in there, <laughs> which I just find nuts because I was so intent on this getting 100% and I ended up completely failing. Oh, look. <laughs> so I did really hate this unit. Like I said, it was a scary place to be. I was away from my home, I was in a different county, so I was homesick. I was totally against treatment. I didn't want any help. I just wanted to not eat all the time. I like fought them at every turn, basically. And some of the staff were amazing. Like some of the nurses and like the individual help I got was brilliant, but it just, it wasn't specialized. And like, they didn't get my BMI up that far. You know, like below BMI 17.5 used to be the old anorexic diagnostic criteria. I was discharged like well in that anorexic zone still. So I just, I wasn't well enough when I left the place. And they'd been sending me on weekend leave and trying to like get me to integrate back home and like get back into my A-levels as well. I'd already missed half the year at this point, but they were trying to get me to go back home and back to school. And also there was a couple of times when I'd like run away from the unit and just <laughs> made my own way home. One day I just ran out and like hitchhiked to the train station and got a train home to my dad. And I was like, hi dad, I'm home. <laughs> And I don't know if you like become institutionalized or something in hospital, but it was so difficult to integrate back into normal life. Like I'd missed a year of school at this point. My friends were growing up and developing and I wasn't at all. I'd been used to hanging out with people with like quite severe psychiatric disorders. I was also used to being cared for all the time, which sounds weird, but when you have like some really lovely nurses around you and people who are helping you like take the anorexia away from you a little bit, it's quite like, liberating I guess and you can get quite dependent on having that help there to like help you to eat so I really did find it hard going back home um, I threw myself back into my A-levels again I basically saw having missed half the year as a challenge to still get 100% and along with that came that like eating less starting to lose weight again I kind of feel like relapse was inevitable but it was different how it was happening this time. When I initially got ill in GCSEs, it was like a total loss of control and a total lack of awareness. Whereas in A-levels, I could see it happening and I could also see everything I was missing out on. Like I'd made a new group of friends at college who weren't like so body image conscious. And that to me was like, oh my God, there is a life out there in a world away from what we look like. And also my little brother and sister who are like three and six years younger than me, they were starting to like grow up and like become quite cool and like get new friends and get interests and like get into music and stuff like that. My friends were all going off to uni and they were like getting boyfriends and I was just starting to think like, oh my God, I'm, I'm actually really missing out on life here. So I was still completely consumed with like food, counting calories, losing weight, getting 100%. But this time I was aware I was doing it and I could almost see like what a waste of time it was, what a waste of my life it was. And then the big turning point for me came when I turned 18 and I got transferred from adolescent services to adult services and I just thought, this is it now, this is my life, I'm just gonna have help forever, I'm never gonna be able to move away from home because I needed to be with my parents to eat. I was never gonna make it to university, certainly not to have fun at university, which was a big, big goal for me. And as I turned 18, they happened to open up a specialist eating disorder service about 20 minutes from where I lived. And 
I'm just so like grateful and fortunate and I just feel so lucky that that happened because I chose to admit myself there when I was 18 and a half I think I think it was like January 2007 I think I was 18 and a half still hadn't finished my A-levels so I got taken out of them and it took me a good three years to get to this point of like totally fighting against any treatment any help being secretive hiding things just relying on myself only caring about weight and food but yeah I just got to this point where I thought what am I doing so I got oh look who we've got <laughs> So I was in this specialist adult unit and it was a lot more targeted to eating disorders, which was brilliant. And also I was so different this time. Like I feel like I was in a place where I was gonna make treatment work for me. Like I wanted the treatment, I was asking for it. I'd admitted myself, <laughs> this cat's crazy. And so you start on half portions of food just to avoid like refeeding syndrome because you're so low in weight. And then they like increase your food and as your weight's increasing, they keep increasing it. And Oh my God, I literally was eating so much food in this place. Like I've, even looking back, I can't believe how much we were on. And it was a really hard, horrible experience in a different way to the psychiatric unit. That was just generally like an intense, scary experience. But this one was targeted at eating disorder hard. And I absolutely hated it. And it wasn't by any means easy, but I really, really committed to it. And like, I didn't just discharge myself as soon as my weight got slightly healthy. Like I was seeing this thing through. And like weekend leaves, for example, I wasn't just using it as an opportunity to go home and lose weight when no one was looking. I was like genuinely wanting to be able to do it on my own. And the hospital also had a flat attached to it where you could practice like independent living. And I think I spent a couple of months in there and you like buy your own food, cook your own food, eat food on your own. And that was massive for me. Oh, I feel like I'm gonna get emotional. <laughs> That was massive for me because for three years I'd been hiding all my food, fighting back, exercising when no one was looking, basically avoiding food at all costs. And now for the first time I was like choosing to do it myself. And I actually had a place at Liverpool University for September of 2007 to study psychology, but I wasn't discharged from the hospital at the time. And also I just, I still wasn't well enough to go. Like university was such a big goal for me and I just wanted to go and have fun and like be free and join in and meet people and drink and party and like basically just have a good time. And yeah, I knew I wasn't in that right place yet. So I canceled that place at uni and applied for the following year to Cardiff to study psychology. But like, this is how much better I was getting. I'd been to look around Cambridge previously because of this drive in me to like always get 100%, always be the top. And so I thought I have to go to the best university. I have to get 100% there. But I think I was recognizing myself that like, I don't have a healthy drive to achieve. Like it's actually really destructive and it makes me miserable and I'm not being myself and enjoying myself because I'm so intent on getting 100% or losing weight. And I just sort of thought, Ah, uh, screw that, like, no, uni's not about that for me. Uni's gonna be a time of fun. So I got this place in Cardiff and that was for the following year. I was then discharged, I can't remember, late 2007. And I basically went home, got a job for the rest of the year. Oh, it was in a restaurant. I think I still maybe wanted to be around food. Um, but just kept myself well, I made a nice group of friends and I was really just trying my hardest to integrate back into life. Like I said, I'd found it so difficult coming out of hospital when I was 16 to get back involved in the world and move away from treatment. I was so in that world of treatment and illness and losing weight and having appointments and it just, I wasn't in real life, but coming out of adult services, I was kind of like, no, that's it. I don't want that life anymore. Like I want to be in real life now. So yeah, I left hospital with a BMI 20-ish. See how good is that? I don't even know what my BMI was. I still had some weird like food rules in place and there were certain food groups I just wouldn't even touch, but I'll talk about it in part three, like that's part of a reason for relapse, I think. So if you're watching this, maybe in that like ambivalent stage of like, not sure if you want to get well or not, like I honestly was in that stage for a good three years and I think I just got to the point where I realized I can't wait until my life's ready for me and then I'll recover to be in it. Like I have to be recovered to be able to make the life I want to have. I don't know if that makes sense, but I think before I thought, oh, I'd recover if I had friends or if I had a job or if I had a boyfriend or if I had university. 
And then I kind of realized like, no, whilst I'm ill, I'll never be able to have those things. So it's that big leap of faith of like, I don't have a life in place now, but I know I need to be well enough to get that life in place. And also thinking back over this has reminded me how difficult it was to break out of that like hospital treatment relapse environment and to move into a life away from eating disorders. Again, I don't think you can wait until everything's in place and until it's comfortable and then I'll slot back into life. Like my year after hospital was really hard trying to keep myself well and integrate and like make friends and stuff again. But I kind of had that goal in sight of, but I want to be well and I want to go to uni. So I almost had to like put up with a year of a bit of uncomfortableness really to get myself well enough to then be able to enjoy my life. And also there might be some people watching who like, like me haven't always received the best treatment immediately. And like, yes, I did get some specialist treatment, which was so, so helpful. But I also think it so comes from us. It's our attitude to treatment. And I, I know it's so cliched, but you have to want to be well and you have to want it for yourself. And I really think I did make that specialist treatment work for me. Like I could have discharged myself when my BMI was just out of the anorexic range, but I knew what was gonna happen if I did that. And I knew I wouldn't properly have that like free life that I was after at university. So I didn't, I like stayed on the unit off my own will until I got my BMI up to a healthy point and then I discharged myself. And I really do think it's never too late for us to like make differences in our life, to choose a different path, to get help if we can, because the longer it goes on, just use that as time to show you like, this doesn't make me happy. Like if anything, the years you are ill for just prove to you that it's not the best life for you and it's not like the real you and like the fun life that you should be living. So in part three, I'll cover like post hospital treatment and relapses that I've had and how still now I'm like, trying to choose life and move myself away from that horrible, horrible years I've spent being ill.